our next um, presentation, we're going to do a, uh, a little mini uh, sharing with you. This is our latest issue of Talking Textiles magazine, which is the sixth issue in this uh, series. And we're very happy to have changed the concept to be much more global and based on one particular direction. So this first issue in this new format is called Fruits of the Loom. And it's all about the magic of weaving in different uh, parts of the world. And to celebrate that, I wanted to share with you three of the stories from this uh, magazine. And uh, of course, you can um, access it. It's just back from the printer. So you can access it uh, through edelcourt.us if you are located in the US or uh, you can go to edelcourt.com if you're outside of uh, the US. So you should all be searing my screen now. And so this first um, story is actually in the middle of the issue, um, which Lee and our team worked on. Lee has done an amazing job. And uh, in the middle of the issue, it's very beautiful because we have a section dedicated to three uh, weaving studios. Uh, these are in different countries, and what's quite amazing is that each of them is a great example of a collective or a place where the studio becomes much more than just a studio, it becomes part of the village, or it becomes a way of life, or it becomes a movement. And so this first one is um, located in Japan. This is uh, the place where June Tomita works, and uh, it's quite an idyllic setting. Uh, June is what some people might call a living treasure in Japan, although he doesn't allow himself that very revered title. And he has developed um, a technique which he's also written about called Katsuri. And this is the Japanese interpretation of ikat, so the dyeing of thread uh, at different places before weaving it together to make motifs uh, come to life. So here you can see the space where he works, which is in a uh, a natural setting surrounded by trees. He says that weaving is not like ceramic arts. It is precise. I can imagine the result from the beginning and not many unexpected surprises happen. Rather, I try to bring the original beauty of yarns and weaves by using subtraction. So in a very Japanese way, he's almost starting with the essential and then trying to take away uh, to get to something even more pure. Uh, in the 1980s, he started his practice, um, which is in the countryside, and then he was joined by many other uh, like-minded weavers and people, artisans, apprentices, who he, um, who he has trained. Uh, it's a small village called Saga Koshina, Koshihata, which is just north of Kyoto. And uh, in this rural setting, in a way, they have started um, a very... Um, yeah, humanistic approach and utopian approach uh, to weaving. Here you can see the weaving studio today. So he has many different uh, weaving machines, uh, I think four or five. And uh, from here, it's almost like a local Japanese arts and crafts movement, which has been uh, founded and continues today. He is teaching many other generations of Katsuri weavers. So there is actually a book. He is the reference on it. So if anybody's interested in that, you can, of course, find that online since we're talking about our book club. Um, the next uh, story in this series is from um, Chaki Maki. She is also a Japanese weaver. However, she lives in India, where she has uh, moved uh, many years ago to start her practice. Uh, she is... Um, turning fields into fabrics, really um, establishing the idea that from the farm we can go straight to textiles uh, using natural uh, materials and of course natural dyes. The studio is called Ganga Maki and it's quite an, a beautiful space as you can see. The space has been de designed by um, Studio Mumbai, so Bijo Jain and his partners have spent, I believe, five years to develop this perfect setting. So it was a very long process, a uh, very interesting process to uh, create a very uh, beautiful environment for 45 weavers and craftspeople to work within. 
Um, so anybody who's ordering the magazine will, of course, be able to read more about this sanctuary of style, as we call it. And the idea, as Bijoy says, that affection is the only technique craftsman needs, very much in the same line of what we heard with um, from Satish. Um, it's quite an amazing space. I mean, it looks like a, a wellness center or uh, a place to go as a retreat. So it really is a sanctuary for the senses, but especially it's a sanctuary in which these creative weavers can, can create their cloth. And the third um, collective or studio that we wanted to look at is um, near Fez in Morocco. This is what we call the Riyadh of Radiance. And this is a collective called the Anu. They have many stores now um, all over uh, Morocco where they can sell direct to consumers. It's the idea that um, women's independence or women weavers can uh, not only make their work, but also sell it direct instead of going through a middleman, which would literally be always a man, uh, who was uh, going into the Atlas Mountains, buying these amazing rugs, but then selling them at very high prices to tourists and other collectors. So in this way, they're able to uh, seek their independence and, uh, and formulate uh, their collective. So they're uh, coming together in these spaces, they are helping each other, they're learning the reaction of their clients, and their clients at the same time can speak directly to them and know um, how the whole story behind each of these amazing uh, pieces of textiles, and especially their rugs. So the location brings opportunities to be together, improve their work, check on the qualities, and develop their ideas creatively together. So uh, you can see here, it's also a very cozy space. So like all artist studios, these spaces are having an amazing kitchen, having a pet like a cat, uh, having lots of natural light, having um, space in which to experiment and create archives. All of these elements are the sort of magic uh, formula, if you like, to creating uh, a beautiful space in which to work and create. So definitely um, go online if you'd like to know more. I think it's about 300 pages or 230 pages of content, uh, all made, of course, without advertising because all our publications are independent. So.